Welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create a collapsible panel or content holder. We're going to use HTML, CSS, and most importantly, JavaScript. So let us demonstrate so that if you'd like to know how to create such, you will stick to the end of the video. So you see, we have this bar with a, an article title and this, this symbol here. So when you click on it, the content and the footer will appear. And then the plus be, displays as a minus. When you click on it again, it will disappear, appear, disappear, appear, disappear. So this is what we want to learn today. You may be having such panel just the side of your web page and you may want the user to minimize them for some reason. So that's what we're going to learn. So let's move on to our text editor and start coding. So here I have a normal HTML document. Here is where I'm going to code, okay? So I'm going to start with a div which has the ID. Now this could be any part of the page, okay? Now this is a div that is holding all the divs with the contents. The second thing, I'm going to embed a div with the ID panel holder. Now this is a div that now holds the panels, okay? Inside this div, I'm going to, em to embed three more divs, which will be the heading, the body, and the footer of the content, okay? So this panel holder, it's the div that holds these three divs. You can see that we have three divs. This, this, and this. Now the panel holder holds all of them, okay? So the first div we're going to embed is going to have an ID of panel header. This is the div that's going to have the title and that X button, this button. So that's the div, okay? We're then going to add another div. This is the div that is going to contain this content, okay? The third div we're going to add, and the final one, we'll go, it's going to have the panel footer, and it's going to hold the footer, okay? Like that. Now in the panel head div, I'm going to add another div, the ID, control and this is a div that is going to hold this control okay so when the page loads I want it to have a minus sign there okay so we are through with the HTML now the, the only thing we need is to add the content so let's copy what we have here and paste it there so when we preview this in the browser right now it won't look so cool let's preview you see it does not look any good okay so we're going to use css to style it and bring it to this look okay so let's go back and add css so we're going to the head section of the document we add the style tags and now we will start styling all of them okay so first we're going to start by styling the div with the id page part so we're going to apply those styles the div with the id page part we're going to give it a width a height and margin zero pixels out this line is going to center it in the page so when you go back to the browser, you see it is centered in the page, okay? Next, we're going to style the div with the ID of panel holder. We're going to give it a width and a height. Then we're going to style this div with the ID of panel head. Then we're going to style the div with the ID of panel head, this one. So we are going to apply the following styles. We are going to give it border radius, which will give it 
rounded corners on two sides a height background color the font color the font family to be tahoma the text indent padding and position relative now this is very important okay so let's save and refresh see we get to that okay so we go back and style the next div next we're going to style this div with the id control okay so we're going to apply the following styles we're going to give it position absolute okay position right 6 pixels top 0 pixels cursor pointer and we make it to display as an inline block and font size now for this to work you have to make its parent div to have a position relative if you don't you are going to have unexpected results okay so let's see what that does you see currently you can't see it let's refresh you see it there and the cursor is now a pointer okay so let's go ahead and style the div with the id panel body this div panel body we're going to apply the following styles we're going to give it a padding of pop zero pixels top bottom four pixels left and right okay we're going to give it a border of two pixels solid blue ish color font family color of the text text align justify overflow hidden that one is also very important and this one will give it an animation animation as we collapse it like this okay see how it moves like an animation that's the line that does that okay so when we refresh the document the other one you see where you get two okay now we're going to style the footer and we are done with css we go to javascript so we are going to apply the following styles to the panel footer the div with the panel footer order radius to give it rounded corners the background color the color the text align the font style to be italic the padding the text indent and overflow hidden okay so when you go back we refresh that's what we get okay but now when you click that it does not work so for that to work we're going to have to write javascript which is the next section now and the most important part now before we write javascript we are going to add an attribute to this div with the idea of control and that is what we are going to use to actually open and close this panel okay so we are going to put an attribute data is panel open and we are going to set it to yes initially we are going to have it being yes okay we are going to use javascript to check this attributes value if it's yes we close the panel and we turn it to no if it's no we open the panel and we turn it to yes so that's why we have placed that there so we're going to place our javascript in the head we don't need this style anymore so we collapse it and just below it we insert a script tag okay now we want this script to run after the window has finished loading okay so we are going to do that we are going to add an event listener to the window the event of load then we are going to pass in the second parameter as a function and the third parameter is the use capture we are going to have it being false okay so we are going to type in all our code here that means the code will only run when the document has finished loading the next part we're going to get object references for this div this one and this one 
and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to say panel panel head equals to document dot get element by ID panel head. Okay. We are also going to target panel body and the control div. Okay. So we're going to say control. equals to control okay and also for the panel body the panel footer Now remember, these ones are variables. You can make them to be local or global, okay? So if you want them to be local variables, you add the var keyword there. The next thing, we're going to get the height of this panel as it is opened and the height of this footer as it is opened, okay? So we're going to create another variable called That will give us the height of this panel body. We're going to equate it to panel body dot offset height. That is a built-in property that you can use. Okay, so we're going to need these variables to reset the initial height. Okay, so how we're going to now give this button functionality? We're going to add an event listener to the control. Okay, so we're going to say control add event listener the type of click the listener is a function and the use capture is going to be false okay this function we're going to pass in an event okay now what you're going to do we're going to check if when this button is clicked the value of this is yes okay so this is what we're going to do we're going to say if event the one we passed in here dot target dot data set now that way we are getting to this attribute of data set dot is and where there is a dash this minus you make the next letter capital is panel open if is equals to yes we run some code if it's not equals to yes we go to the else so if it's equals to yes we want to make the panel body height to be zero pixels like this so we're going to type panel body dot style dot height equals zero pixels also panel footer dot style dot height equals zero pixels okay then we want to turn this attribute to no okay so we copy that we paste it here then we turn it to no because when now we close these two 
this attribute we need it to be no so that the next time when we run this if it will not collapse them it will actually open them then the inner html this minus we want to convert it to a plus so we say event dot target dot inner html equals to that string okay so let's go to the browser and test it up to that part so when you go back to the browser and we refresh see it collapses it but now we need to write the else part for it to open it so for the else part it's just these things the way they are okay but now the height of this panel body we want to use this height that we had initially made into a variable okay so we're going to say it's equals to panel height plus we're now concatenating a string okay then for the footer we want to do the exact same thing plus sorry plus we've just concatenated another string then we want to convert that variable to yes because now it's open and the inner html that control button to no so by now it will work fully okay so let's go back to the browser refresh it so you see it's opening it's closing it's opening it's closing it's opening so if you want to see this how it's working if you're using mozilla you can come to the tab developer tools inspector and i want you to see what is actually happening now these are the html elements we have we have this panel head so let's refresh you can see the panel head data is panel open equals to yes right now but when i click this button it is converted to no and the panel body height is converted to zero pixels and the height of the panel footer is converted to zero pixels see now it's no when i click it again it's converted to yes and the height becomes 130 pixels and 25 pixels for the footer so you can see what's happening you see you see peekaboo no you don't see you don't see now you see that's the end of the lesson i hope you plant some javascript there especially about these html5 custom attributes and if you have learned anything you can like the video and share it okay